What's up, party people in the building? Do you sleep in your diamonds, Vivica? If I get too drunk the night before, and then you <laughs> Lisa Ray drinking a real drink. Big deal. This is my fourth one. We have a lot to be grateful for. I'm grateful for this pina colada, ladies. Okay. okay. Let's get it popping. Let's get uh, it, girl. Let's do it. <laughs> Hey everybody, happy Monday. Welcome to Cocktails with Queens. We've been looking forward to this all week long, so let's just hurry up and get into it. Let me introduce my amazing co-host. Please welcome uh, businesswoman, actress, director, and uh, birthday girl who's out in the Caribbean having a good old time looking all brown and bronzy, Miss Vivica A. Fox. Hey girl. Roche darlings. Hey queens. Hey queens. Hey girl. Hey. <laughs> Looking like a little brown Barbie out there down to the, <laughs> the ocean. <laughs> Girl, great. it is amazing what a little salt water and constant relaxation and drinks will do for a girl. Mm -hmm. I need and a I celebration. So in my life, I'm here with my family, my friends. It's been amazing. But I was really looking forward to seeing you queens tonight. Well, we are looking oh, glad. So special. Yes, absolutely. And I see you posting those those birthday uh, swimsuit shots, looking all snatched mm, okay. and skinny and thin. Oh, the only thing I say is, thank God the diet worked and all them swimsuits fit when I arrived. Because on the way out, everywhere you go, somebody want to feed you and offer you a drink. So you know. So well, you, thank you. Yeah, you earned it. Yeah, I worked hard for those moments, so Claudia. I thought of each and every pose. I <laughs> I forget your age sometimes, and I saw one of the posts yes. that you're fifty seven. Years young. Ooh. Yes, Vivica Fox is 57, turned 57. Um, I turned 57 in my Caribbean heaven. And wow. yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful birthday this year. It really was. We uh you deserve the break. You've been working really hard. Absolutely. Girl. Okay. okay. We see you. We I see know. you. Thank you. Well, let's also welcome actress and businesswoman Lisa Ray. Hey girl. Hello, happy Monday, everybody. Hey, I like that. The background's, that background's cute, though, the brick wall. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like I didn't hit a brick wall. I'm coming, <laughs> coming through, uh, 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 I don't know, the remnants of a cold or a flu. Mm -hmm. You can kind of hear it in my nose. So mm. all I can do to hold these eyelashes up. Uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this. That this was a really... real Lucille, Lucille Ball moment, uh, Lisa Renee. <laughs> no oh, way. that was hilarious. With the little bow right there in the hair, right. too. Like, <laughs> Girl, so I'm cute. taking this right off and getting right in the bed after work. I know, that's okay. right. <laughs> yeah. So there's this really weird, well, I had that summer cold that was going around. It took me two right. weeks to get out of my system. And yeah. it, it, was, it was almost as bad as COVID. It was mm. really strong. So yeah. just mm. be careful out there. Yeah, mm. yeah they said there was a, a, a really bad rash of, uh, summer cold that was going around that was mm. treacherous this so season. not only we got to watch out for that but we got to watch out for the delta this third wave of mm. something that's coming by and uh, anything else that they're gonna think of that's gonna try to kill us okay that's why i'm just gonna wear my mask anyway because i don't want nothing they got i don't want no <laughs> i don't want a cold dang it i don't want nothing so i'm just gonna wear the mask all the way through i don't care vaccine okay. no matter <laughs> well, let me give you we need to give you your introduction. Please welcome Grammy nominated singer, <laughs> fitness guru, and another woman who kills it with the looks every single show, Miss Selena Johnson. Hello, ladies. How are you? You look pretty. <laughs> Thank you very much. I put a little something in. You guys know that my show was canceled due to rain. We oh. heard, heard about that. I saw that. I'm so depressed behind it. That's why I did a little extra today. That's all I got on the performance side. <laughs> because um, <laughs> I was up. so devastated. Really, really. Or did they reschedule? They could not because oh. it's like a series. You know what I'm saying? So every artist has their day, oh. you know? So uh, do you get to keep the deposit? Huh? I know that's right, Claudia. You get, you get, you know, get they, to keep the deposit, you know, they, right? The deposit and the and the back end. Yeah, no. Oh, this is, yeah. You can so, sing to us then, girl. <laughs> I'm just saying. But still, I mean, shout out to Newark and NJ Pack because you know, such a class act, such an amazing promoters, an amazing event. I was just really excited to perform for the people of Newark because I absolutely love that area. And um, I had people coming up from DC, you know, I hadn't performed since the pandemic, you know, Damn. on a stage like that. So I was just really, really sad. My band was sad, you know, mm. we were just really, really sad because we really prepared a really special show. So 
I know hey, you were a little. I got a, I got a right? suggestion, Selena. Why don't you make a makeup and you guys stream it for your fans? On Fox well, we, well, we thought about that. Like we were gonna do, um, we were gonna stream it from rehearsal, but then I was like, "That's boring. I want the audience." Like I've been, I know, I know. Yeah. I just, yeah. It's cool, you know. There'll be more bookings, and you know, hopefully. But once, it, but once again, you got to keep the deposit and the bank. <laughs> I mean, but well, yeah, you know, it's, it's the so. experience. Come on, you know. <laughs> We're thespians and performers. No. We and then, you know, with this, with this variant, guys, like, we don't know what's getting ready to happen, like, in terms of, you know, performance. And I know Lollapalooza is out here not caring. But mm -hmm. there may be some venues that say, hey, you know, if this Delta variant starts to get bad and, you know, the cases start to, you know, continue to rise, it could, it could also put, you know, our shows in detriment. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just praying the that country ended a whole nother deficit yet again. If we cannot yeah. comply with what we need to, you know, do to move forward in the world, they just won't turn us loose. They they don't don't everybody would have just <laughs> listened the first three months last year. We would have been done with this thing or Real in talk. a better position, but it was Real half talk. the people were half weren't. Some were like, eh. And, and it, you can't, it's never gonna go away if it's staggered like this. Like we all gotta yes. be on the same page, right? Exactly. <sighs> we live so in a place called United States of America. We need to be united people for us to go United forward. <laughs> uh, so, Selena, like before, we, before we get into the show, we talked about Vivica's birthday, uh, Vivica, living your best life. Like we see all the pictures and I, I'm so glad you had an oh, okay. amazing time. And, and speaking of amazing times, your son, Kiwan Jr., Selena, also celebrated his birthday over the weekend. Did he have one? Oh, Heather Leo! Oh, he birthday, Kian. That's my young lion. It's it's oh. Kiwan Jr. And that's my Kiwan. little young, my young Leo. His <clears throat> birthday is August 1st, the same oh. day as my grandmother's birthday and the same day as my cousin's birthday. So, that's and the same day as my husband's cousin's birthday. So August 1st is a big day in our family, you know, mm -hmm. so many birthdays. Leo Nation, a Leo lot Nation, well. Money, and my can I send a shout out to Wednesday. my brother Marvin? I'm sorry, can I say a shout out to my brother Marvin, my cousin Dana, my girl Kia McKenzie, who was down here with me celebrating in uh, Jamaica. Happy birthday. So it's just Leo Nation. Oh all. my goodness, girl. It's live. This whole month I'm is- I'm sorry, like Lisa Ray, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, no, no, no. Did, I, I, you, did you tell my boyfriend to call me? <laughs> Well, anyway, that's a sad. Who's your boy? Um, who your boyfriend? Who your my boyfriend? brother? She, oh. they, they, you know, you know, just, you know just, This is just. what you love about people. Sometimes when adults meet each other, you can like like each other and be friends and admire each other. Like, hey, mm. right, and, Lisa and just so nobody won't take it far, uh, he's married. All, I respect that. Yes, <laughs> and what I am, I'm family. So it's we close and we just connected you know and uh, i miss him, the so vibe is good it. okay Thank well since we shouting out Leo, say, and my brother is fine so uh -oh. and he speaks spanish too oh yes and german yeah girl he was a you yeah, know yeah so you know you, 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 you I, I admire that mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah, so he's got a it. brother but my mom's birthday is Wednesday too, so oh, I'm yeah. used to being around those Leo, those lions, <laughs> oh, yeah. those claws. You know what I mean? Whatever. Okay. <laughs> claws. Uh, I, I, I want to shout out my. Uh, we had a dinner for one of my girls yesterday. Her name is Yasmin Moore, and when I tell you, she's the girl that plays the back to everybody else and lets everybody else mm. shine. And I think people like that are so special, especially when we do. Like we're all about us all the time because that's our business. We got to promote ourselves, and she just oh. so graciously plays the back with everyone and supports everyone. And yesterday we had a birthday dinner for her and it was just so nice to just celebrate her. And she, she What's was just- What's her name again, Claudia? Yasmin Moore. And she Happy works birthday, for our birthday, Yasmin. And yeah. she looked stunning. I kept looking yeah. at her, I go, listen, I'm not trying to get at you. I go, but you look absolutely, <laughs> like you are glowing for real, for real. So I just want to shout her out. I love this. Okay. All right. What's everybody drinking before we get into these hot toppers and get messy, y'all? Which I'm doing about? something different tonight, champagne. Uh oh, mm -hmm. I know y'all know. Now it's you know always. that's my drink. You know you know it is, on. baby girl. I know it is, baby girl. And trust me, down here it's too damn hot for some red wine. Oh, you drink red wine, you be like, <laughs> <"What's going on?" laughs> so, so, honey, this champagne has been keeping me going real good. Okay, mm -hmm. Lisa Ray, what you got said? That tea, I still got the tea because I need the tea right now. That's what okay. I mean. Oh yeah, so Lena, honey and lemon. Well, guys, don't call me an alcoholic, okay? But <laughs> we'll see. 
again, I'm, I'm, I'm going through a depression based on my show being canceled. So this is Long Island iced tea. Oh, oh. my God. Oh, I can't oh. guarantee what I'll say towards the end of the show. <laughs> We're gonna let you have it just so we can see. <laughs> okay, what's in here? Okay, it might be Long- Selena night, y'all. Okay, mm-hmm. just, you know, just warning, got, you know. warning everyone. I got a little punk ass wine cooler. Are you about to get pregnant, Selena? <laughs> Long- 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 That's one of them drinks that you really anything kind of goes on a Long Island iced tea. It really does. I haven't had one in a very long time. It's it's, it's real old school. Like a and that's why it's gonna hit different. <laughs> yeah, I'm, it ain't gonna act right. I know. Yeah. <laughs> for, for all the young girls watching that, like probably laugh at us, us drinking one or two drinks. This is your future, y'all. Because when we were younger, we could drink all y'all under the table. And now we have one or two glasses of wine. We stumbling, we saying wild things, and we wilding out. And <laughs> the next day, we gotta like we are in shame. Like, what did I say? What did I? I did that. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. You know, I try not to do that anymore. Like you gotta, when you get older, you learn your weaknesses. Yep. You know what I mean? You don't you wanna wake up like, like that. I can't do like brown that. liquor. I can't mm-hmm. do, you know what I mean? Like hanging in the bed the next day, people. wasting the whole day. You don't wanna do right, all that. Right. <laughs> you know, like a this ain't part of the show, but since we here, I, I, I think the fans love when we do this. What's the worst or most embarrassing thing y'all have ever done while intoxicated? Like maybe the next day your friends told you. Is there anything you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I did, did that that night? Anything wild? Yes, and I, I still be nervous that this tape will resurface. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I was do in college, do tell. I was so drunk mm. at this one party. It was a Drake University. Now watch this tape resurface after this. I got into a dance contest, girl. <laughs> And this is when the percolator and, you know, the West Side percolator where you do the splits. When I tell you I did a split and I, I promise I had on a, a mini skirt, child, just a fool. And I, I think I fell down to the split oh, and like damn. played it off into a dance move. This is on tape. And I was very drunk. So mm. I, I did not win. I got second place, though. OK, because it was just down. It was just down to two of us. And I guess because I was drunk, you know, I didn't do my thing. So, <laughs> so I lost because I was intoxicated. Okay. But it's okay. a, it was an alpha party. Wow. And I believe the alphas. Now, this was back in the day when the camera was this big. So probably, I don't know, they probably don't have that footage no more. That's probably a beta camera or. Beta <laughs> well, they got right. it. Super old camera. school widescreen. Yes. <laughs> right. But the tape was this thing. Yes. Exactly. So hopefully yeah. damaged and gone out of the world. But <laughs> I always feel in my mind, like, if this tape ever resurfaces, Ooh. what is the lie that I'm going to tell? <laughs> right. You know, at 40 well, One time, I thought I was an Olympic diver at a party. And Uh-oh. I tried to come off the diving board and just like, <laughs> I got this. You know, pain, pain, pain. And it's like, that. And I mean, I splattered. And it hurt. You know how you stay underwater for a few minutes, like that oh, that that <laughs> like the belly flop, oh, like oh, like the oh, that stuff. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. I'm gonna play this off when I come up, but okay, that hurt. Oh <laughs> my god, that's so funny, Lisa Ray. How yeah. about you? Anything? Hello. Oh, never she really froze. been a, a heavy drinker. I think back in college when you have, I froze. Yeah, I, I froze. I froze. You're back. Um, yeah. Back in college when you know they had the kegs and stuff. And I don't mm. know if I did anything really crazy, but that next day I paid for it so bad because I was just praying like, Lord, please, if I get back, I won't ever do this again. I promise yeah. you. I was walking around with my head on the side like I was laying down. It was my mm. eyes was hurting. Mm. Everything about everything about it was wrong. And I, when I tell you, I've never, ever, ever gotten like that before. Now, champagne give you a headache. Yeah, you know what I mean? If you but it's different. Eat you know champagne. I mean? Good champagne, you'd be yeah. all right. Cheap yeah. champagne but, is cool. Um, you, I, 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 there's yeah, just so you. there's just so many. <laughs> I, okay, one time it ended. I had to go to the emergency room the next day. Oh so no! I was drinking. We went to the comedy club first, and then we went to some club. And it was when that song by Ti was popping. Bring him out, bring him out, and that is my <laughs> shit, right? And I really can't dance. I I really I'm on an eight count, like I said, but I was. <laughs> Feeling, I was like, bring them out, bring them out, bring them out. Oh. It's hard to talk when the barrel's in your mouth. And when the beat dropped, I thought I could do a James Brown split and come mm. back up. 
But I went down and I snapped my MCL and this guy had a Kooji sweatshirt on a fr- sweater in front of me, like the Bill Cosby sweater. And I oh grabbed his sweater and I stretched it all the way out. And I go, <laughs> <laughs> and I stretched this shit all the way out. And the next day when the liquor wore off, I had to go to the ER and tell that story. And they thought I was a stripper because I they didn't believe it. I was Gucci, literally. Yeah. So yeah. They yeah. literally yeah. popped your coochie. <laughs> but see, once again, Claudia, we've gotten older. We learned our lesson from that kind, those kind of moments. You know what I mean? Like, don't do that. Stay in your lane. Girl, you that do that definitely- now. You do that now. You ain't going to be no emergency room. Be a grave. It'd be we yeah. call. Rest- <laughs> R.I.P. Well, look. Well, thanks, ladies, for sharing that and walking down memory lane with all of us. Um, let's, uh, you know, we're going to take a quick break. And uh, yeah. when we come back, we'll be joined by a powerhouse singer and actress, Miss mm. Heather Headley. We'll be right back with more Cocktails with Queens right after this. It hurts. So, Welcome back to Cocktails with Queens. I love it when we are joined by the amazingly talented women out there that are just blessing our screens, the big screens and the small screens and the theater stages. So we are joined by an amazingly talented Tony Award winning actress and Grammy nominated singer, songwriter and producer, best known for her starring role in the Broadway's Ada and as uh, the original Nala in The Lion King, which I love. She's now starring in the upcoming biopic, Respect. Please welcome Queen Heather Headley. Welcome Woo! to the show. Hello. Woo, 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 woo. How are you feeling tonight? And thank you. I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. Well, we asked you during the break what you would sip it on because we just shared and spilled our guts about embarrassing alcoholic stories. And you got water. <laughs> Maybe that's why you don't have the bad stories like we got. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't drink. The funny part is that I grew up in the Caribbean. So not not too far down from where Miss Vivica is right now, down in Trinidad, and so mm-hmm. she's a little further up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, funny because my I have I've got some uncles who can uh, they, you know they can make up to the table, huh? Make up for it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, let's jump right into it. Recently, you posted an adorable video of you singing with your two-year-old daughter, and the caption you wrote: "She's helping me out and fixing my mistakes." and singing along. I should get it right at some point. We should have moved on to another movie by then though. Did you see your daughter following in your footsteps? Um, I, we have children. Um, we have um, two boys, one girl. Uh, and she is now the one I think who is like singing. The boys are not very much into it. So, um, the oldest one, he can sing. The second one, he doesn't sing as well. But they're very um, almost embarrassed by, I, I really didn't even think they knew I could sing until maybe last, you know, a few years ago. The oldest one, especially. Um, however, uh, she has been really singing. And this is the weird thing, you guys. It's like, you know how people always come to you and they're like, oh, my daughter can sing, my child can sing. And you're like, mm-hmm, whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know how it is, Celine. You're like, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, my father used to do it to me, child. <laughs> a fool. No, I, I hear her in the house and I'm like, wait, she's Aww. in the note. She's, you know, and I, my first performance was a two, ironically. I did a, a radio show at two, my mommy says. And so um, in Trinidad, did a radio show. And so it's, it's weird that she's singing, but she's she's actually holding the notes and stuff like that now. So we'll, we'll see if she... We'll see what she does. I don't, you know. I'm... Well, she's probably got it on us, and she's probably gonna just gravitate towards it. So just get ready for part two of the business, <laughs> which is gonna be. Yeah, I'm like, go be a, a, a neurosurgeon. Go. Right. <laughs> run. Speaking of running, um, you have been running since you know your career has been running upward since Nala. Since the stage play, since um, you played Nala in Lion King, yes. What is, what is it like? Well, first of all, how did that role prepare you for all the rest of your roles? And what is it like to now see it resurface back on Broadway, especially with you know? And then it was in the theaters with Beyonce, and it's like a, you know the next generation is still continuing Lion King, and you was like one originated. So, how does that make you feel? It's funny, Celine. You know, when we started the show. I, I, I just didn't think that it would 
be this way. It's 20 something years later, 20 years later, you know, of course I was only five years old when we started, but, uh, <laughs> but like, you know, I, I, I didn't know the other day. Okay. So when I was pregnant with our first son, I decided that I wouldn't go see the show from the time I was pregnant until I believed he was ready to see it. And it never crossed my mind that the day would come that there wouldn't be a show. You know what I mean? I just thought, I want to see it through his eyes. I want to see it with him. So it took seven years. I didn't see it for seven, eight years because I was waiting for him wow. to be ready. And, um, and then that day came and I embarrassed him. I bawled all the way through it and I cried and I sang too loudly and all that kind of stuff. But it's, it's uh, at the time you just don't know, but now to kind of see it and, and think, you were part of this history, but just a part of, of the first theatrical experience of all these children. And, 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 and the fact that my kids now, my little girl will go to it. And maybe, you know, they're, when they get older, it's crazy. But this is the funniest part. I took my son and I was like, <clears throat> yeah, you know, um, mommy did that. <laughs> he was like, no, what? No. He just did not believe it. He was not impressed. He's like, mom, quiet down. It's the girl's part. And I was like, but wait, wait, I <laughs> what about me? <laughs> what about me? And he's yeah. like, oh, let, yeah. let me yes. let me for, let me say this because I am absolutely enjoying listening to you. This is my first time listening in such a way that your diction has me captivated because I'm now thinking, is this theater or is this annunciation because she sings so well? What the hell is she getting this voice from? She from the Caribbean, I don't even hear it. You sound so good till I'm like this. She's <laughs> frozen. <laughs> Are you intelligent and so focused, and so mature and so read a nursery book and have everybody listening to it. Okay, but my question is this, because we love to celebrate and talk about your new film, your new role, and the um, uh, and respect that Jennifer Hudson is playing uh, the, the Lady of Soul, Aretha Franklin. But you, you, what can you tell us about your role in the movie? So I play Clara Ward. Um, and so Clara Ward, during that time, was of the Clara Ward singers. Um, of course, I had to go back in and learn about her she was kind of you know it, it, it you know everybody kind of started in that gospel world you know and they came through and so Clara Ward um was one of those ladies um it was it was interesting to go back and find clips these old black and white clips of her and her singing she seemed to have had a little relationship with um Aretha Franklin's father and, and she was around that time of Martin Luther King and everything like that. So they had a, a, a little love relationship, but she was also vital in, in the household um, and, and the way Aretha grew up and everything like that. So it was just, it was really fun to, to try to figure who she is out because there wasn't a lot of her speaking or anything like that. But then just how, as you guys know, you women know, I should say, just, just the, the infiltration and the beauty of, of women around men, raising women to be women and to be queens in this case. And, uh, and how all of those women come together, you know, Clara Ward and Dinah Washington and, and Aretha Mo Aretha's mother and all these other women. And so it really is a story about just, you know, the gravitas of, of these women, not only Aretha, but but all the you know what I mean the queens and mm -hmm. tributaries of these women yeah. that her influences mm -hmm. uh, just like to strengthen her and sometimes we have women with all due respect who it's kind of like well maybe not don't want to be like this one you know what I yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean you're like and not her and so she she you know she learns and she understand so it it really is so Clara Ward's was my lady she um loves hair and loves fashion and so it was very interesting to kind of go in the first day and be like that wig's mine and it was like yes <laughs> she was okay. like, I, I saw the screener today and you were giving fashions and hair and I loved your character for stepping in and being so supportive 
of Aretha as you know when she went through there's a lot in that story that I did not know and y'all have to go see this movie I had no idea about all the things that happened in her in her world mm. well let's talk about this cast you know I mean lady you're like mesmerizing us tonight but the cast is off the chain I mean you've got everybody in there from you know Jennifer Hudson to my gosh, Marlon Wayans, Forrest Whitaker, Mary J. Blige, Titus Burgess. I mean, this Audra McDowell, she's amazing. I mean, you just got kings and queens left and right. What was it like for you to be a part of a cast like that? Well, you know, <laughs> when you're surrounded by roses, you have no, even if you're manure, you're gonna come up smelling like roses. You know what I'm oh, okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, but wait, y'all. Did y'all see the presentation of that old woman? She said, look here, okay? <laughs> okay. You have no choice. You know? I love you. You are amazing. No choice. Iron sharpens iron, and that's how it is. Yes, queen. Absolutely. Come to the center. Yes. If you have to rise to the occasion when you're amongst. You must. You mm -hmm. must. You better. Mm -hmm. Or iron's going to be like, you need to go, because that's how it is. <laughs> and so... Right. Look, Jennifer has been inhabited. I watched it. She was inhabited by something other than I knew. So, so I think mm. that I sat there and I thought, well, Aretha just came in and inhabited the girl. Wow. And that's how it is. I mean, she's singing as though they told her that your life depended on it. it mm. And she, she was handpicked. Yeah, I was just about to say she was handpicked by Aretha. Yeah, it was, and she. <laughs> Rightfully so, because you know, they, I, I I remember coming in and going, okay, it's gonna be. And there was one time I was sitting there, just kind of like, like I was like, oh, you're Clara, so pull it together, because I was like, this is Heather or Clara. Remember, right. mm. was, you you we had to, because she really is singing um, amazingly, and then Titus is amazing, Forrest mm. is, is beautiful, mm. and and sad, but but. Just you, you, you want to feel sad for him. I'm sure Claudia, you understand, but yet you're scared of him, and he's mm. dangerous, and 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 yet you're. It's it's scary. And Marlon is, I think, is putting on a performance like you have not, you won't expect. I can't. Shocking, wait. shocking yes. performance. Shocking. I'm not gonna jinx it. I think everything is amazing, and so and then Liesl who is the director? You know, she kind of also. We have a female director. Oh, yes, ma'am. A black woman. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. How fabulous. And so Liesl did this and also hired a lot of people from Broadway. So it's it, there's all these girls. Haley, who I, I believe, is in, in Once on this Island. Say Khan. Um, the little girl who plays Aretha, Sky is her name, who is, is really phenomenal. And so it really is, is a musical slash you know, biopic slash everything. And I just, I really think it's going to be great. And I, I actually, last thing I say, uh, at one point I was like, oh, why don't they bring it out during COVID? People need this, people. But now as I think about it, and Claudia, you may agree or disagree with me, I think what people need is to be in the theater mm -hmm. and to be like this. You know what I mean? You, you yeah. know, need to be in, in your little TV with your TV. You, you need this music yeah. around. You, you the experience. It's yeah. an experience. That's how I felt about Dream Girls. When yes, agree. Let me tell you something. When that Jennifer sang Ooh. that, I'm telling you, child, chills. Mm. Chills. So I can only imagine. I can only imagine, especially her being from Chicago, the city of soul, for her to be able to infuse herself into, you know, into this role and sing Aretha Records. Which yes. are first of all the bomb anyway. Yes. All y'all in yes. this just love when they pick the right folks that already Absolutely. know how to sing and they place mm -hmm. them and then they do their thing and then they make us be entertained. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah. the entire the entire cast is just, mm -hmm. just you know, incredible. And and Jennifer, the, they're not easy songs. You know that, Selena. They're not mm -hmm. I'm saying this. Let me tell you, I cannot wait. And I'm definitely going to go to the theater and see it. Absolutely, y'all. Get y'all tickets and make sure the ticket stuff says respect. Because you know we gotta watch them when they be trying to not let our movie profit <laughs> yeah. as much as oh no, you know, I'm, you know, you know, every damn hustle yes. over here gonna talk about the coin. We're gonna exactly. make sure we watch that. So y'all get y'all due respect. 
And as Heather said, you definitely need to be in the theater for this one because there were scenes, I I won't give any of the movie away, but the chills and then the, (gasps) you're going to have a bunch of that. You're going to have a bunch of like, you're going to cry watching this movie. And Jennifer Mm -hmm. Hudson absolutely will give you goosebumps. The way she sings, I can't see anyone else doing that. Agreed. Mm -hmm. So before before we let you go, we got to let you go. but, But on a high note, you're busy. You keep it popping. Uh, besides your role in this movie, Respect, where you did amazing, you also star in season two of Netflix drama series, Sweet Magnolias. What can you tell us about the new season? And before we let you go, also, I want to know what else can we expect to see you in? Because I know you stay busy. <laughs> well, um, we're really excited about season two and just finished it. Thank God, finished it healthy. And with no um, no issues at all, I was tested every day. But um, yeah. really proud of my cast and proud of everybody. You know, everybody was shielded up and everything like that. But um, there's a lot of drama going on, and uh, I was just really uh, just just so moved by the fact that people love the show so much, and so we're excited about season two. And also, I just um, did. You know, Jam and Lewis just. Uh, release their volume one record. So Jam and Lou came out and got all their people and um, Mm -hmm. put out a record of all of us, even songs that we did maybe years ago that they wanted to release, stuff like that. And so it's called volume one. And so you should pick that up. It's Tony Braxton is singing, I think the best. Mm. Mariah Carey's on it, Boys to Men, I'm on it. Janet on there? Janet on there too? I don't know if Janet's on this one. Because there's, there, of course, there's a volume too. But oh, okay, okay. Every, it's everybody. They, they're going through the list of all the people that they've worked with. But it, so that's on there too. But before I allow you to let me go, I'm told, <laughs> I'm told that the birthday girl is still celebrating her birthday. So I know that this is not necessarily the drink that she. <laughs> 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 girl, I got enough for everybody. I'm trying okay. to get in some H two O though, girlfriend. Let me just let you know that it ain't no lot. But we don't toast with your water. Come on, y'all. Yeah. You beautiful guest, Heather. Continue success. Yeah, I, so we can't wait to personally see you and give you a big hug when we're able yes. to see you on the red carpets and the press line. And congratulations, and we humbly love love you much we are fans definitely <laughs> yes. absolutely yes. such a class act and a talented yes. lady and, and and gorgeous might i add i want to thank heather headley for joining us tonight make sure to follow her on social media and follow all of her projects and please support this woman this queen we'll be right back with more cocktails with queens when we return make sure you go check out respect get y'all tickets <laughs> Welcome back to Cocktails with Queens. Make sure you check out the movie Respect. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff in there. I didn't know. They was getting it in in the 60s. Oh, they was getting it in. Yes, in honey. The 60s. I'll, I'm, mm, I'm going to leave, leave it at that. Well, she got a lot of love records. So she talking about somebody, man. She got a, little, a lot of tell-off mm. records, a lot of love, a lot of heartbreak records, you know. Well, that's why and she told me to give R-E-S-P-C-T. That's what she a lot of A lot of respect, right. A lot of, a lot of life. You know, mm-hmm. when you live that long and you're in the business for that long, bonafide, like seriously, she got a lot to say. <laughs> she, but she but got, you have to realize she was like one of the first, like, you know, kind of like gospel, but R&B, but crossover to the white people. Like she, of that era, how many different people that, you know, different cultures yeah. she was able to affect, you know, during a time where they tried to stifle not only women, but African-Americans in general. And for her to come through that whole era, and I mean, she was a star until the end. She had two yep. funerals, okay? With them okay. shoes sticking out. I said, you go, girl. And make and- sure they was Louboutins. times. She did. <laughs> okay. Right. And, and the furs and, right. and, and just, and just being, right. I'm sure like at, at the end of the movie, you know, she was around and very active with Martin Luther King Jr. with really getting the message out. And then to mm. be around and able mm. to perform at the inauguration of Barack Obama and see things come yes. closer. That had to be such yes. an amazing feeling for her. Mm. You, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, wow. and, and she, like I said, she got it in. She had a fun life. When I tell you. I know that's You can right. learn from that because you absolutely should not let any grass grow under your feet. You absolutely oh, need yeah. no, that's right. My friend's uh, grandmother had a sense. She said, when I sit this girl down, I'm going to have showed her a real good time. <laughs> I think that's a good model to live by, don't y'all? 
<laughs> yes. You only live once. I mean, you know, I ain't saying to be, you know, but why not live and enjoy life? It's so amazing, you know? Well, well, someone that's not going to be enjoying life is that damn R. Kelly. TMZ reported that he doesn't want the feds uh, to include any evidence about him allegedly having sex with a man because he thinks the jury isn't ready for that wrench. He fears the jury may take him out, take it out on him in a verdict because he assumes they're homophobic. Um, you know, this comes just after weeks after uh, prosecutors filed a new request to use allegations of uncharged crimes, one being that the singer groomed and molested, a, allegedly, a 17-year-old boy. What are your thoughts on the updates, you guys, you ladies? This just keeps getting just more and more informative and bad and sad because Rob, as I affectionately call him because we are friends, we go back a long way. This is hurtful, you know? Mm. And, 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 and when you, you know, see that someone's life now is, is just, hey, it's gone, it's dwindled down. And some can, you know, to, you know, say that, you know, rightfully so. Some say the verdict is still out, you know. Some say, hey, mental illness or not, you know. It's a lot at stake here. Um, but, you know, what's done in the dark is going to come out in the light. And That's because hot. this is something that now has come up, people want to know. You know, people want to know because I think that that's going to have a lot to do with his sentencing. You know, because if you're mm. adding that and throwing that in with all the other stuff, yeah, you're going to get more time because now they're looking at, well, not just women and not just young girls and not just build a cult and not sexual trafficking. But then you went over here with the boys too. It, it, it's a two thing. You know what I mean? And so when it's a two thing, then it's like, we'll add two on top of the 22, two, two, two years that he going to get or whatever. You know what I mean? So mm. I, 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 and I know he's embarrassed. He got to be embarrassed because not only if all this stuff is coming out, but now you 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 singing my mind. So let me know. Mm. But my body, my, his body should have been telling him no, too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> his body was telling him, hell yeah, do him. Screw him, screw her, screw the little kid. Stick it, baby, baby. Come on now. That's baby. what the mind was telling him. The mind never told him no. His penis told him yes. He's going to be more embarrassed now, too. You know what I'm <laughs> well, this completely it, it changes things if he's in jail now, because now the brothers is like, really? Um, well, <laughs> that, that entire term? <laughs> okay, are you saying they about to step in the name of love when they say Oh, all on it. All on it, honey. They gonna step they in, gonna in the closet no more. <laughs> they gonna step Let's in put it that way. You saying oh, they my. believe they can fly up in that? <laughs> Okay, let me stop. I'm, I'm, I'm before I get canceled. We're gonna take a quick break. Okay. We're gonna stop. Oh. We, we, we gonna, we'll be right back. Okay. Wow. Oh, God. Welcome back to Cocktails with the Queens. We got a lot more show to go. So listen, uh, y'all, it's been reported that Lamar Odom has been ordered to pay nearly $400,000 in child support, back child support. According to page six in May, Liza Morales, uh, his baby mama, sued Odom after claiming that he wasn't honoring their 2015 settlement agreement for their now adult children. Following last month's court appearance, Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Matthew Cooper ordered Lamar to cough up $385,000 in child support, rent arrears, college costs, and more, and also legal fees. What are your thoughts on this with, uh, you know, him falling so far behind and then being ordered to pay this money? Um, so yeah. this was past child support that was due, correct? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yes. I mean, guys, pay your damn child support. Right. Let me tell you something. Nowadays, they, they come up for y'all. They're going to be like, now you got 18 years of it and they might even put a little bit of interest on it. So Especially you know, if you're not a father, you're not there, you know, right. he wasn't there like, to help. Dude, so at least you can help offset to what you said to pay. Yeah. My thing is you're out here frolicking with all these different young ladies, but then you're not taking yeah. care of your child. So, I mean, and, and why? What, what does it hurt? It's a bill. It's still a bill. You know, your child needs things. Your child is used to a certain lifestyle. Um, to my understanding, he was with this girl, with this girl when he was in the league. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, why? Why not just pay the child support for your child? It's for your baby. 
Like, what's what's the matter? If if you have it, I mean, you Lamar Odom, before all of the foolishness, you have millions and millions and millions of dollars. So, I mean, I don't understand the stop payment. Was it was it maybe at a time when he went through all of that, you know, that stuff with the drugs and, you know, all of that almost done and all that stuff. Maybe it was in that moment where he got behind or, you know, whatever the case may be. So I don't know. I just don't understand. He never did pay or anything. That's why so much. And so he just tried to cut. Oh, that's dumb. That's yeah. dumb. Checked why would out. you not pay him? That's mm -hmm. dumb. Especially it's when really... you were dating Chloe, she could have helped you when, you know, she was your wife. Or it's, it's also dumb because, listen, we all saw you on reality TV, True. you know, lavishing get gifts on Khloe Kardashian. You didn't give birth to Khloe Kardashian. That's not your seed. And she's actually financially well off more than you are. So, you know, I hate when I see men tricking off on other women when you're behind on child support. Like any woman that fools with a man that does that, like you're a bird, I think. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't want to rock with a guy that don't rock with his own seed. And yeah, lately I could see him having financial issues, but they, she said this agreement goes back to 2015. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? He, that's six years. That's, you know, it's been six years. And we've seen Lamar doing some things where, you know, and I do feel bad for Lamar. He was super dope at a sport, but he, and he did have an issue with, with, you know, substance abuse, but that doesn't take away from your responsibilities. And I think people think, I think some men think, well, she got it. And now that the kids are 18, it's probably not a priority to pay her back and make her whole, but she carried the load. You know what I mean? That should have been really on you and, as well. And it had to be a situation where it was a buildup because let's just say you were in a financial bind. You, you can always go back to the court and, and, and produce document and show that you're in a financial bind and get an adjustment. Mm -hmm. yes. You, 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 you had to have, because I don't know the facts on it, but you had to have been like, oh, well, and just not paid it. And that's what's a fool. Like you could have gone to the courts and said, hey, I don't have it. I'm going through this, that, and the third. But you didn't, you obviously didn't do that if a judge saw fit to say, no, you getting ready to pay all 300 and some thousand dollars today. No. Okay. No. Today. No. And I do think. And I do think athletes that were once making millions of dollars a year and then their their income changes, they should, I mean, there should be an adjustment. Yeah. They're not making the same money. I, that's Absolutely. that's a fair that's yeah. a fair thing to say. We're not male no bashing. Yeah, no one's trying to be unfair, but you know, children have to be raised. And you know, nowadays children, you know, for them to be productive, they gotta have a good foundation of going to school, clothes. So that mother probably broke her neck trying to make sure that this child was raised and you can't just check out and when you check out now a judge is going to make you pay and that's the, the bottom line yes what a check well, well speaking of getting paid in check someone who has no shortage of that is uh steve harvey's wife marjorie harvey let me tell you something she received a louis vuitton airplane bag designed by virgil abloh and uh the cost of the bag ladies is $39,000 for this airplane bag. How do y'all feel about this bag? What do you think? Is it worth 39 racks? No, it's not worth 39 <laughs> racks, but Marjorie Harvey can do no wrong. <laughs> Clearly, girl, so. she is a fashion icon <laughs> and absolutely deserves every the little- The lady bag. loves couture. You know, How sometimes these bags ain't even practical. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. when you have I that mean, much I, money, I really yeah, when you have that much money and, and it's not really just about being practical, it's about oh, okay. having the first and the only one, that limited edition, you know what I mean? Okay, but y'all, upon further inspection, let's look at this bag. What are you going to wear that with? Nothing. An air suit, an airplane suit? Uh, I mean, I, you know, that, 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 this, this wear person is so elaborate. You would either have to have a Lisa Ray moment and have on all white, cream, or brown, like you have to let that plane land I before know. you do, literally, because the you want the thousand dollars. You know what I mean? You understand what I'm saying? Like, what moment would you? I mean, it, and it's. I wouldn't take it out the house. I'd be scared somebody gonna steal it from. Me. And then that's thirty nine thousand. Well, first of all, anybody stealing shit from her, you know? <laughs> she got. I, I'd just be nervous. I'd just be like, this can just stay in a glass box. But if she got bags exactly in the house now. on display. I just, I, artifact, honey. I mean, you know, I've seen people carry like, you know, they might have like a basketball with a little drip or something like that. But there was a plane with like wings and like wheels. I mean, look at it. You know, what you put in it? I mean, the bag, the bag is to me, the bag is silly, 
But if I'm married to Steve Harvey and I lay down with him every okay. night and I and I do my wifely duties and I put it on him because he's clearly had it put on him because he is he loved her to he loved him some Marjorie. I'm he gonna fine. get a dumb I'm gonna get a dumb bag. I'm gonna get a bag that's shaped like an airplane, an elephant, a crocodile. I'm gonna have the most goofiest shit ever because I can. And that because makes you gone. I'm trying but, to tell you, she can't do no wrong to me. I mean, an airplane child could have been a boat. I don't give a damn if it was a jet. <laughs> He can't do I no mean, wrong. I mean, but you know, I mean, listen, if somebody yeah. get you be like, my, my man got me this bag, for, it was 40000 Ain't it fabulous? I mean, but that bag is just, I. It's a mess. It's we gonna take a, okay, we, <laughs> okay, we got, we got to take our last commercial break and we'll be back. Welcome back to Cocktails with Queens. Now we've reached the point of the show where we dive a bit deeper into talking about our personal lives, relationships, overcoming obstacles, and how we have persevered throughout our lives. I want to welcome everyone to our queendom. Okay, these are graphics. All right. Tonight's topic is finding peace in relationships. Uh, Exo Nicole published an article about the ultimate sign people should look for when they're in, you know, curious to know whether the person they're with is right for them. The article stated the following, come to understand that peace is absolutely essential and gain more clarity on what peace is and requires, which is tranquility, agreement, and harmony, wholeness, completion, and restoration. Do you agree with this? And more importantly, how do you find peace in your relationships? Communication. Got to communicate. Like that's like number one. And finding someone that is Love. doing that is difficult. <laughs> I've been having a lot of con- the same kind of conversations with several of my friends lately about where they are with their men and how we handle conflict. Like there's two kind of schools of thought. Like some men when we're arguing, they think I'm going to give us some time for her to cool off. And I'm like, that never works. We don't cool off. We get madder the more days go by. So you got to communicate. So to piggyback on y'all, it's communication and something, you know, just dive right in and talk about it. I have never seen something get better by just letting someone cool off. So I, for me, peace is we need to talk about some things and not to go to bed resentful and hold it on. Cause I'm still going to be mad at you when I wake up. Probably. You ain't going to get it, I think I like wholeness. I like that wholeness piece because I think, um, you know, a lot of times people think that a person is going to complete them. Right. And I think um, you find that a person can't really complete you as a person and that I really think it's best to come in both two holes. You know what I'm saying? Instead of two halves. So as you know who you are, you're complete. You have wholeness. You know who you are. You know what you want. You know how you feel. And you're established in in your life and in in what you want to feel and think. And then the other person is also established. They know how they know what they want. They know how they think and feel. They don't need to come in and have a person fulfill or complete them. That way, when there are moments when you know you are bumping heads or having moments. Because you are a whole person, you can take moments away and step away and be okay with being alone to figure certain things out. I do believe that you definitely need to communicate. That's number one, uno, numero. Like you can forget it. If you're not going to talk, forget about it. But I do think it's good that, you know, to be a whole person when you come into a relationship, have something to bring to the table. Don't come in thinking that you're going to be fulfilled when you get there because then that's going to cause you know now you're going to be mad at that person well they're not giving me what i need to feel this way and you know vice versa but if you come in as a whole human both of you will be able to give instead of looking to take from each other which can cause conflict that's really why it's not 50 50 it should be 100 100 right because 100 yes people if you're looking for someone to fulfill you you're first of all you're going to we all have that friend, right? That goes from relationship to relationship to relationship because they're not whole by themselves. Yes. So they're, they're dating open. body parts, which, you know. Ooh, yeah. that's a I word. Told, I yes. told my girl, I mean, stop you know, being. And, yes. yes. Do not be I mean, ruled by dick. Or, <laughs> right, Bimbo? Or Do not be ruled by dick. Absolutely. Or, or, or money. Body, that is something that then happens later in life where you can be honest with yourself and like, yeah. I can't stand him, but he got one thing that just 
keeps well, me coming or his back. money or his money don't be or rude his money. there's 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 different addictions that people draw you back yes. in mm-hmm. but you know like i said when you know getting older in life it's like you know you you really like to have someone that like you enjoy being a friend with and your partner you have to travel with have a great time with you know and i just i need communication that works for me let me know because I, I always say this i'm not a mind reader right and men and, struggle with that ironically communicating but you want to be a leader and the head of a household. Well, right. how are you going to lead the troops? You speak in Spanish and I'm speaking English. You ain't talking. You feel and I think how are you going to lead me somewhere? And, and I think the, old, the older we get, it's probably, I would make an argument that it might even get harder to communicate because we're more stuck in our ways. And we think, well, it's been working for me ever since. Or you ain't about to tell me what to do. Oh, and well, you're stuck it. in your way, right? It's probably yeah. harder. Yeah. X, yeah. But, you know, everybody has to humble themselves in relationships. And that's well. hard part, just humility, you know, humility to to the relationship, you know, what I'm saying to the to to love, to the union, to what it means and what you want it to be for you. And it's not about winning. It's becoming a unit so that you can have a healthy, happy relationship that goes forward. Well, on that note, we are going to wrap the show, Lisa Rassi, but you got cut off, but we will talk more with you next week. We'll see y'all next week. I want to thank Lisa Ray, Selena Johnson, Vivica A. Fox, and our special guest, Heather Headley. Make sure you see that respect. We will see y'all back here next week. Stick around. Another queen, Tammy Mack. The Tammy Mack Show is coming up next. We'll see you next time. Bye, ladies. Bye.